All right, million dollar picks. Week 15. I'm so disoriented by this season. We're already in the Saturday game schedule, but it's not the second to last week of the season. And there's lots of football left. And the patch, I feel like, oh my God, they have the, and there's so many games left. I know. I don't know who's in the driver's seat. Very confusing. But we're going to jump on Casey um, playing tonight, which I feel good about for a variety of reasons. You mentioned Slater is not playing the left tackle, who is the best lineman on the Chargers. Seems important. It's a home game for the Chargers, but as we've seen all season and for the last two seasons, is it? Does it count as a home game? How many Chiefs How many Chiefs fans are going to be there? How many Chiefs fans turn this into their little holiday trip? Or we're, let's come to LA, we'll go to the game on Thursday, stay for the weekend. What's the most random Chiefs jersey you're going to see? I'm thinking like a Dexter McCluster, you know, jersey you're going to see. Like that's This is the, what we call the not New Jersey game where people just have these incredible random Chiefs jerseys all over SoFi Stadium. Well, you know what the underrated ones are? It's the Montana jersey and the Allen jersey. The Marcus Those Allen jersey is like a secret one that you will see Those multiple good. times. So you got that. Um, the Chargers, they're getting some Renaissance stuff. And our guy Ben Solak wrote about it for The Ringer this week about what what why does their offense look so much better than it does. And it's like they're doing more stuff on first down. They're using Keenan Allen more. All stuff that makes sense. At the same time, I look at their schedule. They put up 20 points against Minnesota. They put up 41 against Pittsburgh on Sunday night. But if you remember that game, everyone in Pittsburgh was hurt, right? Yeah. It was no defense. They basically missing everybody and took advantage. 13 points against Denver. They light up Cincy. Really weird game. We had Cincy in that game, but mm-hmm. it was just, there were turnovers. There were, it, it's, it was, didn't feel like a 41 point offense performance. I'll just say that. And then, uh, and they killed the Giants last week. My point is, like, I, I'm leaving the door open for the Chargers have figured it out, offensive juggernaut thing. But at the same time, they might, have, they might have just had a couple good games and maybe they drift back a little to where they are. I like the Chiefs' pass rush. I think the Chiefs have found their identity defensively, and especially with that Slater, with Spagnolo just blitzing the fuck out of them. Mm-hmm. And then on the flip side, like, I like the way the Chiefs are running the ball. Um, they've really, since Edwards Hilaire, this is the best he's looked since he's come back. And then Williams comes in and they can throw in it. It just seems like, even though maybe the points aren't there, I still like the, I like the plays they call. I like the way they look. And I, I actually feel like there's upside with the Chiefs still. And maybe this is the game. What do you think? Sure. I, I We'll see. And by the time this goes live, we already will know the results of this. I'll just say this. Watch the two offensive linemen, the two rookies for the Chiefs. They The the Chargers, as we know, have a, a really struggling run defense. And Trey Smith and Creed Humphrey, that's their center and their guard. They're both rookies and they've been mauling dudes. And I could see this. Everyone wants to shoot out between the quarterbacks, but I could see the Chiefs just dominating the ball up front in the trenches and taking care of business that way. A little more Kelsey. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have this up. This will be up by like five o'clock Eastern time. So we're we're we have plenty of time to get this into the wire. So KC minus three. I think we are marking down. Let's go. And in general, this is a nice spot for KC because the Pats, the Pats are underdogs against the Colts this weekend. And the AFC could flip pretty quickly. I mean, if you want to talk about it that way, Chargers win. They're in first place in the AFC West. So it, it is so up for grabs right now because they've already beaten the Chiefs in Arrowhead. It's actually a really cool week of games, even though it doesn't look like there's that marquee game. Every single game seems to have some playoff contention stakes in it. And like the whole thing could be totally rewritten by Monday. It's an amazingly unusual good Thursday night game. It is. Like, like, it's, an, it's a marquee Thursday night game in week, you know, whatever it is that usually this is the, you know, Titans Jaguars and both teams got three wins. Because the flip side is if the Chargers pull this off without their left tackle and beat the big bully in the AFC West, you would assume it was a Herbert game. Yeah. And Herbert's, you know, he's, I, I'm not going to say he's bursting through the door yet, but the pass he start, had, he's the pass starting he had to accumulate. To Holy yeah. crap. That pass to Guyton, 66 in the air, in the, in the air last week. That's maybe the pass of the season. So who knows? We shall see, but I'll bet on Mahomes in a big spot. Let's go. Well, I'm with you, but I was going to say Herbert, it's kind of infringing on Mahomes' wow factor corner where Mahomes was like, I'm the wow guy in this league at quarterback. You're right. I'm the one that gets the clips cut out and everybody has a big jerk circle about what, <laughs> I can't believe he did this and oh my God and look at 
look at this. Like there was a Herbert thing where somebody posted the pass chart. Yeah. And that, that pass he threw that you're talking about, it was like 65, 67 yards, whatever it is. And it doesn't end on the pass chart. It's just this line. It just goes, there's no X to where the pass landed. Um, So yeah, from a wow standpoint, he's kind of there with Mahomes, I think. And it doesn't it feel like Mahomes has one in his in his back pocket for yes. Tyreek tonight, and it's like now I'll take that back, thank you. Yeah, Mahomes really seems like the the. the I wonder like the stuff with his brother, how much it's weird. The his brother is just a very strange social media presence in a whole bunch of different ways, and I wonder like uh, I don't know. Wait, maybe that's partly to explain like he's had kind of a, a goofy year for him, Mahomes, yeah. who was the guy going in the year we were thinking was like Tiger Woods in the late nineties, basically. Yeah. Um. So who knows? We'll we'll have some answers tonight. More games for us. You know I'm not letting Pats plus two and a half against the Colts go. Okay. Let's talk about it. Well, you make the case for the Colts. I want to hear it. If you if you think they have a chance, make the case that's not just Jonathan Taylor, they're gonna run on him. And like, what's the case? What do we know about Damian Harris right now? I, I mean, this is the thing. If we got a hamstring issue with Harris, are we ready for Ramondre Stevenson and Mac Jones to go into a building in, in late December and say, hey, I'm going to beat a playoff pretending, contending team with Darius Leonard and DeForest Buckner? The Colts are good. Like The Colts are legit. They have a really good up front uh, offensive line, maybe the best in football, and then a good defensive line. And I think they're going to make Mac Jones beat them on the road in a big spot. And I'm not sure... As much as we love Mac, I'm not sure he's going to be lighting the ball. He's going to be lighting it up all through the air in this game. So you're worried about young Pats guys in key skill position spots? Yes. Can I flip that on you? That's why we do this. Let's go. Carson Wentz against Bill Belichick. Your thoughts? It's not a great, not a great matchup for old Carson. I'll tell you that. I mean, that that is fair. Um, but I will take the Colts' run game over the Patriots' run game right now. Fair. Fair. Pat's coming off a bye. Colts coming off a bye. Frank Reich versus Belichick. They beat him in the Super Bowl. <laughs> These are good, good counters. <laughs> this is good. Pat's in a tease or Pat's straight up? What makes you feel better emotionally? I mean, if you think the Pats are going to win, you take them straight up, right? I don't know if the Pats are going to win. I think this is... I think all the Pats fans deep down know that this is probably, other than the Chiefs, the worst matchup in the AFC for them. It's because a tough of, one. Because if the Colts get the lead and then they start hammering it with Taylor, and even though you stop them nine times, the thing about Taylor is the 10th time, all of a sudden he's running for 38 yards. Let me ask you, as far as Patriots fandom goes, when you see that logo and that building and that owner and that history, is there a part of you that just absolutely fucking hates the Colts? It's not a small part. It's yeah, an open even, part. Even without Peyton and without you know Bill Polian and without all that, it's still just that logo. Hate the Colts. It goes back to them trying to change the rules after 2004 because they didn't like when we were too mean to their receivers. Um, the 06 title game, which is just still devastating to this day. Um, Up 21-3. Jeff Saturday and Klecko. Yeah. The Manning Brady stuff, and then the Flake Gate when yeah. the Pats kicked their asses, and then all of a sudden it was oh, the balls. And, Forty-five um, to seven, they beat him in that game. I just rewatched it. I didn't realize it was that big of a blow. And everyone thought Andrew Luck, like this is his chance to seize it, and it was it was not that. I was thinking about Luck the other day. Actually, is that the biggest what if that's happened this decade? Because you think like they had this whole team that was set up to be a monster contender, right? They're also, he's on the salary cap, so it actually costs them from a salary cap standpoint. But if Luck, I don't know, if if he just plays and he's a B-plus with all the other stuff they have, and they don't have to give away draft capital for Wentz, and they still draft Jonathan Taylor, who they probably would have anyway, and they just kept the team that they had, and maybe he takes a year off and comes back and he's healthy, they, they would have to be the best team in the AFC. I don't. I actually feel like we don't talk about this enough. The oh my god, Andrew Luck retired. That guy was really good. It's amazing, and he was an MVP candidate every year. He had fulfilled every promise as the first overall pick right out of the gates. He took him to the playoffs, and that was when Pagano got sick, and Arians then got sick before the playoff game against the Ravens. Like Luck was amazing, and yet he kept such a low profile and has kept such a low profile that 
he showed up at Stanford a few weeks ago and was there when they honored John Lynch. And it was like a blip on the radar. And I'm like, that's like seeing a Sasquatch. I have not seen Andrew Luck once. And in today's social media, Instagram world, like it's unbelievable that he's been so low profile. Are you, would you call him an enigma? Would you I go so. enigma? I think Let's I would too. Enigma. I think um, I would too. But it's such a weird fork in the road for them because everything else is kind of there with the Colts. Like they would at least be... I think a contender. Now they're a team that if they lose this Pats game, they're not even a playoff team probably. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's a great what if, and there's a great doc to be done on like Andrew Luck and what went down there because now three years removed, you're not coming back. But like no. one year removed, maybe two years removed. And shit, I work on TV. You do this stuff. I mean, like I haven't even seen him do an interview. Or I haven't seen it. I mean, would he be good in a studio? Maybe. Would he be good doing games? Maybe he's got an interesting voice, but like, Gosh, Andrew Luck has vanished. And who knows what the Colts could be right now if he had stayed. I'll tell you this. It was a huge loss for the BS podcast. Sal throwing it to Andrew the Giant and me getting to do my Andrew. I, I don't have a lot of good imitations. It's like when, it. when I'm only three or four and I could do the Luck voice. And now it's like I'm so out of practice. I'm afraid to even try it. So it hurt me too. Andrew yeah. Luck, you, you, you know, you left a, a trail of broken hearts. Um I hope he's happy though. It seems like he's happy. I read like he's like yeah, traveling the world and climbing and look, football, really physical, violent sport. Sometimes people are like, I'm good. I'm out. I'm going to do something else. Um, we could tease the paths. Okay, let's tease them. We could tease the pass past seven. Okay. Which I think is what we should do this time. I think that's the most. Um, we could tease them in a six point tease to eight and a half or we can go seven point tease. The reason I mentioned a seven point tease the Eagles are playing Washington. Washington, um, just a bunch of COVID scratches. Ravaged, like, ravaged. Ravaged. To the point that this is a potential, might even have to cancel the game situation. I like Philly in this game anyway. Uh, the line has climbed to nine and a half on FanDuel as we're taping this. And a seven point tease would take that down to two and a half under a field goal. So they like, could Philly win by a field goal over a completely ravaged Washington team? Seems like a safe bet. I, I was thinking of marking it down unless you disagree. No, I go with that. And I, I don't know if it, I would assume as we do this on a Thursday, Hertz has been practicing this week just a little bit, been around, been seen. They might go two quarterbacks for all we know. You might see some Minshew, you might see some Hertz, whatever it is. The Eagles have avoided the COVID stuff and Washington, unfortunately, has not. Third one, if we're going to do a three, three team seven point tease, which is plus 120 on Fandle. Um, the San Francisco 49ers playing the Falcons. The Falcons, okay. the most deceiving six and seven of all time. And yet every time they're a deep underdog, you get scared because yeah. they come back. They're down 21 to three. Now it's 21, 17. And Matt Ryan has the ball to bring them down from nine and a half to two and a half. Now we don't have to do this, but wanted to talk it out. I think the Niners, we talked about this on Sunday. I was just really impressed Awesome. With the with the blue chippers on that team and the fact that their best guys now, except for the running back, their best guys all seem either healthy or mostly healthy. Samuel, Bosa, Kittle. Kittle. Yeah. And you add you add in Trent Williams, who I think is the best tackle in the sport. You can argue that those three those four guys are enough. And, and with everyone being injured and all this COVID stuff around, like those four guys being healthy and out on the field enough and uh, Samuel's battling right now. I know he's, he played 46 snaps and a lot of guys wouldn't have played any last week, but right. I think you can argue just the talent of those four guys alone are going to keep them in every game. And then you have like, like Ayuk started to come around a little bit. Jimmy corner, looks better. Jimmy's still going to throw his one terrible pass. That that near pick six was yeah. bad. But the, the 49ers corners are atrocious right now, like real bad. And you saw what Jamar Chase did. If you trust Matt Ryan at all, you might want to stay away. Yeah, I was, I, there's something about the Falcons as a deep dog. I wanted to have the Niners conversation. I will say this, bet on them to uh, make the Super Bowl today at 17 to one. Did you? Yeah. Interesting. Just okay. good odds. Sure. Because if we're going to say the Cardinals aren't in pole position anymore, and we have Tampa who had Richard Sherman playing sef uh, safety <laughs> on Sunday, and then Green Bay who... I don't know. I like Green Bay, but do, do I think they can be beaten in a playoff game? Sure. And then I watched that San Francisco team where in the right matchup where they can run the ball and Kittle, if he can just stay healthy for two more months. And then what Bosa was doing last week, I thought oh was God. out of control. Oh my God. Uh, they can block, they can rush a passer and they have multiple playmakers. Like what more am I looking for in January? No, I hear you. I hear you. So that was the move. All right. So 
Can maybe. I throw in one team? Just the Rams are just so ravaged with this stuff too, and it's nothing against them. I, you know, obviously I was on them last week against Arizona, but right now it's like it, it, it's really bleak right now, and I'm not sure how it clears up by Sunday. So I would say just consider the Rams and going with whoever they're playing this week, which is Seattle, and and maybe just say Seattle's. They're going to be down without Lockett, maybe, but they might just have more fresh bodies and more guys available to play. So Seahawks are plus five and a half, and that could be brought to um, 11 and a half or 12 and a half. And I would do that. I would do that. I, I find it very hard to think that the Rams are going to look anything like they did on Monday with all the stuff they're dealing with this week. All right. So we'll mark that one down. Eagles minus two and a half. Pats two plus nine and a half. And see it. I wonder if that we just do it a 10 point tease with that. Um, all right, we'll figure it out. Uh, two more bets for you. <laughs> so FanDuel has these alternate lines and I think okay. we might, there's a chance we might boost this assuming the COVID stuff goes okay with these games, but we can take the Pats to minus two and a half. So if they win, they'd have to win by a field goal against the Colts plus one thirty. Take the Browns Playing in Vegas, obviously no Mayfield, but I'm not even positive that's a bad thing, assuming he doesn't play, because I think Case Keenum, I'm not sure there's a difference. And I know they've had some COVID stuff too. A lot but of you, COVID stuff. You could take that in the minus three and a half. That would be plus 170 for the Browns to win by four against this Vegas team that just seems like they're just a complete mess. Yeah, and it's in cold weather in Cleveland. I'm not sure if Vegas is looking to, to schlep out there and bring their A game for that game. They might already be done. Pats. Browns with those alternate lines would be a plus 521 parlay. Like a fun Saturday. You like that one? It sounds like a fun Saturday. So little on the Pats minus two and a half, little on the Browns minus three and a half. They would both have to cover that plus 521. I thought we could mark that down. And then last but not least, underdogs. Mm. Underdog parlay. We we knew we weren't going to do well last week. We just didn't like the underdogs. And the as Giants. it turned out, yeah, we, we weren't feeling great about it. But a couple good ones this week. We have the Texans. Okay, why would you do the Texans? They suck. What's going on there? Well, Jacksonville's favored by five over them. And I, I just, my question is, should Jacksonville be favored by five over anybody? Plus, uh, it, the glass half full is like, well, got rid of Urban. They'll be so yeah. fired up to win without him. Glass half empty. This has been a complete shit show all week. Crazy week. And this Jimmy, this is a coin flip. How do we know who's going to win a Jacksonville Texans game? Who knows? Let's, let's go. We've bet on the Texans, I think, twice this season, and they won those two games. Uh, Texans I mean the beat Texans. the Jaguars. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. And then, uh, so that's one. And then the other one would be, as an underdog, the Bengals. The Bengals are... In Denver. I like it. Bengals we are... Give, we won't give up on the Bengals, you and me. Plus 130 for the Bengals. I'm in. Let's go. Texans plus 190. And if you put them together, it's around uh, plus 570, which we'll boost because we like to do for the uh, for the FanDuel stuff. So that's what we're looking at. Anything else? Anything else you would throw in there? No, I'm good. I feel okay. great about these. Yeah. Okay. You feel great about this? <laughs> I do. Capital Why G, not? great. I do. Okay. Why not? It's the holidays. Let's go. All right. Kyle turns camera. Million dollar picks. Week 15, taping this lunchtime, Pacific time, in time to get the Thursday night game in. Casey, at the Chargers. Do you really consider this a home game for the Chargers, Peter Schrager? I don't know. I, I imagine a lot of Dexter McCluster and Glenn Dorsey jerseys out there. <laughs> Glenn Dorsey. <laughs> uh, Casey minus three. No left tackle for the Chargers. Uh, AFC West on the line in a way that I think the the Chiefs actually need this game. It's not like, ah, if we lose this, we'll be fine. It's like, no, we, actually the Chargers could grab the AFC West if you lose this. A lot of Herbert buzz this week. A lot of Herbert buzz. A lot of Herbert is, has the strongest arm and is the best young quarterback buzz. A lot of Mahomes. Hey, you're not the sexy new thing anymore. I'm sorry. There's no... A new hot actress has come in and taken your place. You're not on the hey, magazine covers anymore, Mahomes. Hey, Michael Jordan, guess what? Clyde Drexler might be the best shooting guard in basketball. Yeah. Um, I like the way the Chiefs look right now. And getting them minus three or under, jumping on that. We're going big. 750K. <laughs> on the Chiefs minus three. We're Let's going go. big. 
Look, I'm for in. the year, we're down nine ninety five. We need to start making some swings. We got the playoffs. We need to increase some bankroll here. Um, we we win this game if if Troy Aikman and Joe Buck say the name Trey Pipkins twenty times. Trey Pipkins is filling in for Rashawn Slater. He is out of Sioux Falls College. Like if Trey Pipkins is is mentioned a bunch, it means we're doing all right. Next one, a tease. It's a three teamer. It's going to be a seven point affair, which is plus one twenty on FanDuel. And here's what we're going to do. If you agree, we're going to take the Eagles down from minus nine and a half to minus two and a half against Washington, who is just going to have a bunch of people scratched and might not be good to begin with and had some quarterback issues already. Philly wins by a field goal. We're good. Hopefully some Minshew mania. Be excited for that. Maybe it's the the Patriots. We're going to take them from plus two and a half all the way to plus nine and a half. So the Colts really have to, would have to kick their ass at this point. We would need Mac to completely melt down. I don't think that's happening Saturday night. And then finally the Seahawks taking them from five and a half to 12 and a half against the Rams. Um, now my question is, do we do a seven point tease here or a six point tease? If we wanted to get frisky about the Eagles, can they beat Washington by four? Does that make you more nervous than the two and a half? We can take no. the three and a half or two and a half. No, let's go. I think they can. Let's go. Let's play. Okay. Let's play it big. Six point tease is plus 140. So we're going to take the Eagles to minus three and a half. We're going to take the Pats to plus eight and a half and the Seahawks to plus 11 and a half, plus 140. A little less on that one, 200K. That's right. Then we're going to do a little alternate line parlay that you can do on FanDuel. We're going to take the Pats to minus two and a half, plus 130. The Browns, who probably have Case Keenum started. They're having some some COVID issues as well. I get it. But they, ha- they have Vegas. And we don't trust Vegas. Plus 170 minus three and a half. We can put 100K on that. Plus like 521. It. Plus 521 for the parlay. 100K on that one. I like it. This is the Willie McGinnis parlay because he is going to be there for NFL Network. It's the Patriots. It's the Browns. It's his teams. This is all for Big Willie. And it's a Saturday thing. We'll know right away. We'll know if we won... 100K at plus 521. We'll know at the end of Saturday night whether that one worked out. Pats minus two and a half. Browns minus three and a half. Finally, underdog parlay of the week. Texans. Yeah. To beat. Who's coaching the Jaguars now? It's Daryl Bevel. Daryl Bevel. (laughs) Bengals to win in Denver. I like it. Combo that is plus 570. We're going to boost that up to 701. Come on now. Give myself a FanDuel boost. Put 33K. On that, uh, what are you the most excited about out of all of those bets? I, I can't wait. I cannot wait to see what Cleveland brings amidst all this COVID stuff, without Stefanski, all this stuff. Can they hold their end of the bargain? Come on now, Browns. Also, little reverse Ewing theory for them with Odell Beckham, who's gone to the Rams and who has <laughs> been immediately turned good. into an asset again. It's like good, really hmm, good. <laughs> hmm, what's going on here? All right, those are the million dollar picks for week 15. 